Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to a joint Morris Organisations event all about recruitment. And today we have a panel of four different speakers, uh, one from each of the three Morris organisations and one who's in all three Morris organisations. Um, so I'm going to hand up straight away over to our first speaker, which is Ant from Beltane. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Pauline. Um, I'm just going to attempt to share my screen. Hopefully it's visible. Brilliant. We're away. Um, well, good afternoon. My name's uh, Ant Veal and um, I'm representing Open Morris today. And we're going to give you um, our view as Beltane Board of Morris, um, our view of recruitment. Um, I think the talk will take probably 15, maybe 20 minutes max. Um, but uh, but do give me a nudge, Pauline, if I if I if I do um, start rambling. <laughs> a little bit, a tiny bit about me first. Who am I? Um, well, uh, my history in Morris started in 1989 when I moved to Norwich, went to the University of East Anglia and joined Yale Valley Morris, um, which was mostly Cotswold with a little bit of border and Molly as well. And uh, and I. I was squire, it was, it was a sort of joint squire foreman role for a year in 92, 93. Uh, in 95, I left and had a break for eight years. And then in 2003, I was wandering down Torquay seafront and saw a Morris side um, called Beltane Border Morris. I was impressed with what I saw, joined, and I've been there ever since. Uh, so I've been foreman for them for four years. And since 2016, I've been uh, I've been squire, which is a joint role. It's a large side, so we so we share the role uh, between uh, more than one person. So, um, so a quick overview of my presentation today. A little bit of introduction about what I'm going to talk about. Um, I'm going to uh, focus on uh, three sort of areas of focus. Really, uh, we've just conducted a joining survey just to see um, how people join, why people join Beltane. Uh, we thought we'd share that. Uh, and then I'll explore some of the recruitment avenues uh, that people followed. And also uh, we've got a big following on Facebook uh, that we built up over the last 14 years. And I was just going to communicate some of the, uh, some of um, our experience with that. Right, so a little bit, people laugh at me sometimes because uh, at work I do numbers. So, uh, so here's a few numbers about Beltane. Uh, it was formed in 2000, originally as a women only side Iron Maidens, um, but opened up to all in 2001 and became Beltane Border Morris. And since then it's grown steadily year on year with a couple of significant blips in 2011 and 2016. In 2011, the side broke into two and the uh, rats were formed, Isambard Gasket Rats, another border side, uh, slightly different. And then Beltane grew again, had another sort of blip in 2016, which I'll talk about uh, as, as part of this talk. And currently uh, we've got 40 dancers, seven melody musicians and nine drummers. So it's a large side, 56 members, but we do have a large turnover as well, which is interesting, 15 to 20% uh, annually. Um, it's partly because I think we get a lot of people who've never done Morris before and they do it for a few years, do something else or have kids move, um, life moves and that sort of thing. So um, very broad age range, 19 to about 75, I think. Uh, we perform three traditional dances, one local dance to South Devon and 16 dances that we've created ourselves. And at present, because the side's very large, we've capped uh, membership, new membership to, to six, six max for, for 2023. So I said I'd talk about uh, a joining survey. Why did people join Beltane? So we asked all 56 members why they joined Beltane. We had 48 responses. The gentleman there, he's he's the joint squire of Beltane. Um, he's an IT professional uh, in his spare time, but uh, this is this is him um, dressed in uh, in Beltane with, with an onlooking crowd at Wimbledon Folk Festival last summer. Um, so here, here were some of the findings that we found. 56% of people mentioned that they joined Beltane because they saw us at a pub festival or seasonal event. Here's a good example of an interaction between a Beltane dance, a mid dance and, a, and an onlooking crowd. A, a young girl there with, with a hat on who's looking slightly worried. Um, other people looking on with a little bit of sort of trepidation and the dance are getting very, very close to the audience. 40% um, of people joined Beltane via friends, 
or partners um, or broader word of mouth. There's quite a few members actually were joined because their partner was part of it and they thought, well, the only reason that they could, well, the, the, only, the only chance of seeing their partner was to actually become part of Beltane as well. <laughs> so 22% um, of people joined Beltane because at one of our events, they chatted to a member and we managed to convince them that uh, Morris was uh, a lifestyle choice that was right for them. 17 of us followed us on Facebook and were impressed with what they saw. And um, most then saw a new member advert that we send out once a year and came along to, to one of our practices. So, so there, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a mix of uh, how people have joined. As I said, we tend to mostly attract people who've never danced Morris before. In fact, 79% and 10% of those in the side had previously been very skeptical about Morris and critical of Morris. So, so we managed to sort of turn their view around and uh, without them realizing that they, they, they've then become a Morris dancer. And um, I think, uh, oh, I'll just move my little, so I can read the bit at the bottom. These were some of the keywords that people put in as well. They, they were impressed by the energy of Beltane, the enthusiasm, how we dance with care, uh, the quality of the music, and that strong sort of sense of community that you get in a group as well. So uh, some more findings. Oh yes, I've got some quotes from uh, from people. Um, one of our long-standing members wanted to was previous dance with another side, dance for years, was a bit fed up, wanted a side with more life variety and entertainment. So they tried Beltane and they've been there for about the past 15 years. Uh, someone else, no Morris experience previously. I had no idea what it was all about. I just knew that I wanted to do it. They come to see us. They were impressed with what they saw, came along and joined. Someone else as well, uh, who's one of our newest members, they were transfixed at Morton Carnival watching us. Once I picked my chin off the floor, having never seen anything like it, I knew I had to join. I, I thought, oh, this is why I moved to Devon. But not everyone joins instantly. We've got two members who initially saw us, quite liked us, and took nine and 12 years respectively to decide to join us. <laughs> so, uh, so, so why, why would you join a Morris side? Um, well, I, I've got a copy of the second edition of the Morris book published in 1912 when I was flicking through it the other day. And um, Cecil Sharp says, the Morris dance being a spectacular, not a social dance, was performed on special occasions only and rarely once, more than once or twice a year. It's interesting that use of that word occasions. Occasion, when you look at it in the dictionary, is a particular time when something happens, a special event, a ceremony or a celebration. So Cecil Sharp is saying that, you know, you're not just dancing amongst yourselves, you're dancing for a reason, you're dancing at an event, you want to make it look impressive. And certainly, that's something that, that Beltane has always aspired to do is if you're going to do it, you're going to absolutely go for it and, and impress the crowd. Um, challenges that you have, of course, where you dance. This is where we dance on May morning. It's just a piece of road with a car park beside it. Um, it's about bringing something to life, really. And that's what we transform it into. <clears throat> Um, just a group of wild dancers. It was chucking it down with rain in 2014. We went up there. I'm sure many of you do the same as well. You just, you just go for it. You just dance because it's May morning. That's what you do. Not just us, of course. This is uh, a side that I'm always impressed by. Glory of the West, who's a wonderful flowing movements and that. Two years later at the same location. Oh, look at that, that sunrise. What, what could be better to do in, in life than, than to, to dance the sun up um, with, with, with Glory of the West? Another day as well, a moody May morning 2019. Um, the sun didn't come up, so we, we light our torches just to add a little bit of extra atmosphere. So it's about um, transforming wherever you are to make it a memorable occasion, uh, to draw the crowd in and, and to, uh, to share that energy and passion for, 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 for dance. Um, the word enthusiasm came up a lot with, with those people joining the side and, and, and it's something that I've always aspired to doing. I could be a bit negative at work sometimes. I sit staring at a computer all day and I, and I look at this quote, enthusiasm is the electricity of life. How do you get it? You act enthusiastic until you make it a habit. And I, th I, think, that's, I think that's what Beltane have always really 
aspire to doing really is if you all put enthusiasm in, then you start to share that energy and it, and it just lifts your, lifts your spirit up. There's quite a nice picture of, um, of Helen in our group here, who um, is one of our sort of more senior members, uh, who's, uh, who, who has the biggest stick and um, you don't argue with her. But, uh, but, it's, but she's also a bit of a pyromaniac as well, loves fireworks. And it's about creating a firework, not just that fizzes, that explodes, that everyone looks on, is impressed by. So, uh, so that, that's what, that's, that's how I see enthusiasm, really. So, uh, so I, I drew this diagram as well, because I thought it's, it's all a, really, when you're trying to recruit, is trying to share that energy and to draw people in to inspire them really to say actually i quite fancy doing that as well we focus a lot on the dancing of course as well um, because the dancers generate the movement to the to the to the sound of the music so um so, so we only ever recruit once in the autumn we expect good attendance, unless, of course, your children, jobs, that sort of thing. But people give as much as they can do. Um, we recognise that not everyone is uh, as fit, has the ability. It's about, it's about getting the best out of people, really, I suppose, um, and, and making sure that people are, are only dance when they're really confident about it. You want, to, you want to send a group out that the crowd can watch and they think, oh, they know what they're doing. Um, and you've got to be able to enjoy yourself as well. Something we do in Beltane as well. I mean, I've been in it 20 years now. Um, and, and what keeps me in it as well is Dave Bairn, really, who, who 15 years ago said marginal gains. You need to look for ways of adding extra flourishes to your performance to, to up your game, really. So, uh, so we've always aspired to adding in little extra flourishes to dances to make them, make them better. Um, it's also about strengthening your identity as well, how you look, how you sound, how you move in your personality as well. But it's also, it is a community as well. It's about supporting each other as well and praising each other when, when things go well. Um, here's, here's a good example of, of when we're out and about at a pub. I think it's, um, I, I know it's sort of about the dance, the music, but it's also about the audience as well. It's, it's using that audience and getting the most out of the audience really. So positioning them so that they get the most out of it. They don't get in the way. They've got the pub on the left so they can nip in and get a beer and they can come out and watch us dance. Um, it's, it's all quite sort of intimate as well. You get the audience as close as you can, uh, which maximizes that energy of, of, of the event as well. Problem we have though, we dance in very open locations as well. This was a bad location. We didn't, I didn't get any energy from that one at all, really. It was the audience didn't stop as well. They just walked past. It just wasn't, the, the, the energy wasn't, wasn't building there. So, whereas at this location, the Rugglestone, the energy did build. And in fact, at that event, uh, we recruited those two people in the audience who are now dancers with us. Um, so, so yes, it's about maximizing that sense of energy framing um, the, the event so that you've music, dancing, dancers and an audience all in, in close proximity. Make sure you're the center of attention. You're not just a sideshow, you're there to, to give impact, to draw the audience, to hold the audience, inspire them, tap into their imagination and, and make them want a piece of the action as well. So hence that's I, th I think why a lot of people have joined because they've seen us and they've been inspired and gone actually, my life's a bit dull at the moment. I want a piece of that sort of action. We also stay behind afterwards as well, socialise, sing, because quite often people come up and ask questions, all sorts of you know, curiosity questions. So, so really, um, that maximise that sense of occasion. You want to build buzz, really, I suppose. Buzz is quite a good word. That feeling of intense enthusiasm, interest, excitement or exhilaration. And make sure that the audience is a core element of everything you do when you're performing. Very quickly, three sides that I admire. Um, the Witchmen, uh, in particular, they were they mentored Beltane in the early days. We got a lot of our inspiration from Terry Dix and Linda Dix um, for, for, for sort of style and, and how we presented ourselves. Uh, I love the enthusiasm of of Wreckers, another local side. They've got a wonderful band. They could they can fill Corsan Square and and just they just love love dance equally. 
cogs and wheels do as well. Someone came up to us at, at an event and said, why do you dance with cogs and wheels? I said, I said, look at them. They absolutely love the dance that they do. They're, they're completely passionate about it. Look at their faces. It's, one, it's, it's, it's wonderful. L lovely, the diversity of it, uh, of, of yeah, what we do as well. So um, we also, uh, a good way of um, promoting yourselves is through postcards, through business cards as well, and, um, and the CDs. Um, so so it, it's helped keep us afloat financially. Um, we have quite a few people who, for one reason or another, are struggling financially. And I'm a great believer that Morris should be free at point of use. <clears throat> so we do our best to help them to get to events because it's, you know, they're as valuable to us as, as anyone on the side. So, uh, so hence, so hence that side of things helps to support and, and, and increases the, the inclusive inclusivity of the group as well. Um, it, it means that those can join that, that, that might not be able to afford it otherwise. Uh, and then the social media moving on. I know we've probably got five minutes left. Uh, so f Facebook, um, we entered the world of Facebook in 2009. More recently, Instagram did a little bit in Twitter, but, but aren't doing much with that at the moment. Uh, so Facebook took a few years to get the hang of, really. Um, we had a sort of modest face, a fan base of a few hundreds for several years up until about 2016 but we found that it was a great way to extend your reach and make friends around the world we had other sides around the world who asked us about our dances and our dance some of our dances and we did build a strong enthusiastic following by keeping make, making sure our posts were positive and uplifting as well we always ensure that everyone's wearing full kit we don't do any sort of behind the scenes sort of stuff uh, we think carefully about how we word what we what we do uh, we carefully pick photos that, that really sell the occasions that we're going to do to promote people to come and summarise events afterwards. And we also like to share the work of our fans as well. We've got some brilliant people who, who take videos of us and take photos of us. And, and it's nice to share their work as well because it help, helps them out as well. Posting little and often works best and keeping it timely. As soon as the event happens, get it online. Um, one thing that we did have though on the 1st of May uh, 2016 uh, Maggie who, who looked after our page for many years um, put a video on this I, I won't play it because it'll probably break my computer but uh, but it was an incredibly powerful video very simple just us doing our fire dance um, but it was at dawn it it people woke up all you know these hundreds of fans woke up shared it and, and it went crazy. 7.2 million people watched it in total. Um, we had 1,800 people comment on it, dozens of messenger messages, and our followers jumped up to 10,000. And May Day seems to be the day when, when people go, wake up and go, oh, it's 1st of May. Oh, yeah. Oh, Morris dancing. We've never had anything like it since. Um, but it, but it, it, it jumped us from sort of being, you know, there in the noise to, to being sort of, you know, we, we, we were the sort of the moment uh, back then. So uh, we had dozens of requests to join the side. We had 30 new dancers at the first practice. We were a bit overwhelmed, really. Um, but what we were able to do was to say, sorry, we can't cope with everyone, but why don't you try these other Morris sides as well? So we used it as a, as a mechanism to sort of um, inspire people to, to, to try other, other Morris sides as well. Um, so we've never had anything since, since, since that. Uh, just to very quickly, our demographic um three quarters of people that follow us are women identify as women um and most are there's very few under 35 really so I, th I think that's an interesting thing for the future really i know my kids use tiktok and don't use facebook because old people use facebook so it'd be interesting to see how in the coming years how if you're trying to target younger people um how, how best to target them um Here's a, this is the last three years of activity on our Facebook page. Um, 2020, like most Morris sides, we just pretty much closed down, didn't do anything. And so the line's completely flat until uh, we suddenly started posting uh, for the spring equinox in 2021 and then did something on the 1st of May and it went completely crazy. Uh, and then didn't do much for the rest of the summer. The following May, uh, we had a more modest, um, uh, sort of peak and then through the summer we've actually got better at 
uh, posting sort of on a, on a sort of semi-regular basis and, and we've kind of uh, gained, gained momentum again but it, it's sort of interesting that that the first of may is a great time if you're if you're trying to recruit get a message out there get some good pictures out there um and uh, and, and people people will follow you facebook although it's virtual it, you can create quite an intimate atmosphere with it. I think sometimes this is a good example of a, a photo that uh, someone took at our, at our wassail there of, of me um, um, blessing the apple trees uh, with, with a few onlookers. Onlookers. It's also, um, as I said, a great way of uh, encouraging people to come out to your events or to at least follow you and share with your friends. Um, what's the spit? Um, uh, uh, to to, to, to like-minded friends. We've got, few hundred shares with that one um, and uh, don't always put pictures on you can put quite nice artwork as well uh, that was for for the summer um, solstice which got an equal um, sort of um, number of likes and, and, and shares uh, and then we also put the odd post out just to just to um, highlight our recruitment um, night um, in, in the autumn so so overall uh, Facebook has been good. Um, people can feel the energy as well online, which is interesting. The energy is amazing. I would love to attend a performance celebration. What would be the best way to find the information? Um, that looks a whole heap of fun. More power to those Mary Morris men. Well, that's a bit of an old stereotype. And women as well. <laughs> uh, how am I learn more about it? How can I become a part of you? So, so, so there you are. You're you're sort of recruiting online there without without doing anything other than putting some pictures and a video on so um and, and here uh, i love this one this seems a bit like a morris dance well that's exactly what the oir the clues in the name <laughs> border morris dances okay uh just uh a few closing remarks um about recruitment um we'd encourage any group to work together with the side to always exude as much energy confidence and enthusiasm as you can muster because the crowd will soak it up and they if they're in the right mood they'll want a part of it and that's where you're gonna i think that's where you're gonna you're gonna recruit um a good place to recruit make the most of every occasion make the most of your audience as well and and that's both in a physical sense and an online sense i think we've we've quite enjoyed um running the uh, the facebook page because we've made loads of friends on it and we've met up with people they've come across the um, Atlantic to see us and, and at times uh, but above all enjoy yourselves and hopefully you can inspire others to join you thank you very much for listening brilliant thank you very much and um questions oh hold on am I still muted no questions for Ant please Helen Hi, um, a quick question. Uh, um, well, two questions actually. Uh, do you charge subs? And if so, what, 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 how much do you charge? And also, do you use Twitter at all? Uh, if I answer the second one first, um, we do use Twitter. And in fact, we've got eight or 900 followers. But, uh, but I think it's one of those things where you need someone that knows how to do it, really and has the time to do it um so so our, our twitter page is there but it, it lies a bit dormant at the moment it'd be nice to sort of revive it again i think sometimes you can you can link sort of facebook to twitter to instagram we've got an instagram expert who's um who was actually i think recruited via instagram so uh so so we so yes it, it is there and i i personally think it would be good to to revive it again but again it's uh we put more emphasis on the Facebook side and the Instagram side, I think, because the the following is much larger and, and we have the sort of um, the, the ability to do it. In terms of um, the sub side, I think one year we did charge a modest sub, but I'm I'm a I'm certainly a great believer that um, that uh, that money shouldn't be a barrier to to anyone. <clears throat> doing Morris dancing so uh, so we've, we've managed to keep it free we we do wherever we're out we do um, put a collection round and and any money goes straight into the into the account we've been successful as well with um, CDs we've got a lot of people who weren't really musicians when they joined the side and and we've sort of uh, through a couple of members gently encouraged people to sing to play uh, and realize that actually it sounds really good and we've created cds and 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 
and they've become very popular. We, we've, I think our most recent CD, uh, we've printed a thousand copies and we've sold about 700 of those over the last sort of 18 months or so. So it's, uh, so it costs a pound or so to create and we sell, sell them for five pounds. We don't make a, you know, we don't, we don't want to charge too much really. It means that it's, it's affordable to, to a lot of people, but it does mean that it keeps, um, keeps practices and uh, free um so that although you have to yeah we have to pay to travel and and stay at festivals um actually attending practice is is, is free of charge for for members okay we've got uh, malcolm born with her i was just checking you can hear me and i've had some sound problems yep yeah okay um when you post on social media um, do you post just on your own page or do you post to local community groups or any other groups um, beyond your own site? <clears throat> mostly, uh, it's mostly just on our page. Uh, occasionally we'll advertise through pubs. Uh, we've got, there's quite a few pubs that are, that are quite active on, say, Facebook. And uh, and so we'll, we'll we'll go through them as well. Or um, we do our wassail in Lustley and... Um, there's, there's quite an active Facebook group there, so so we can, they can, they kind of repost stuff as does the pub as well. So, but dominantly it's it's on our page, and then it yeah you know, it gets shared or um, beyond there. So, but we might send a, an image and some text to to another you know to another page, and, and they'll publish it on our behalf. So, but right, it's a good. So, yeah. so when you try to sort of spread the word about your page and things, it's kind of organic through word of mouth rather than through any particular actions that you take um yeah yeah, yeah we, we publish yeah publish all our events on the website um it yeah. all goes on the facebook page i, I don't know whether liz you, you want to say something uh who's our <laughs> who's our um festival um bag um but uh but yeah it's uh um yeah we hand out leaflets as well um and yes yeah, mostly via um I, I think as well um say with our wassail we don't really want to promote it too widely because you get too many people at the event uh, right. it's nice to have a hundred it's nice to uh, at a, a kind of a, a fairly sort of intimate event like that where it's a an orchard in a village to have villagers there to have their relatives and friends and us and our friends there and not sort of the whole world because you, you there's, there's very little parking in some of these places and, and you can get overwhelmed so it's so it's kind of sometimes you you recognize it I mean, yeah, it'd be nice to advertise it very widely but actually you, you know can, you can be overrun and it suddenly becomes uh, unmanageable okay thank you thanks and we're going to come back dan from glastonbury is going to talk about social media a bit uh, later as well so um any uh, quick remarks now from liz then nigel then tom Yeah, I just uh, wanted to um, say about Twitter, I think the, the people that do the social media for us in the side um, have I've got a, a feel that there's, you know, we don't need to, basically. I mean, that ad may disagree, <laughs> um, but, you know, it's just another job. And to what purpose, I suppose? I mean, it might work for other sides, but we're not feeling the need. We've got enough followers as it is. Um, and yes, it's great not to have to pay for um, coming to practice. Uh, I think that is quite helpful. Nobody knows that when they join. Um, they know that once they become members that, they don't, that it isn't going to cost them anything. Um, yeah, and then just about the Facebook pages um, and advertising. Yeah, it goes on the website. Um, we have somebody who takes care of that and somebody who, two other people that post regularly um, on the Facebook page and all the events. Um, and I answer all the um, messenger queries. Uh, we get quite a lot of messages, some really daft, some quite sensible. <laughs> I try <laughs> to answer all of them nicely. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. I don't think we, we do anymore. It seems to work so far. Brilliant. Thank you, Liz. No, I'm sorry, I'm only hurrying up because we've have run out for this 25 minutes. So, Nigel, have you got anything? Oh, yes, thank you for yep. that. Um, yep. this, is, this is just a very quick question because I know nothing yep. about um, 
uh, Morris down in the deep southwest. Um, how many other teams have you got in within your sort of catchment area, if you can call it, if I can use that expression? Um, just is there a lot of competition there down there, or? or... There, yeah, there's, there's quite a lot of border Morris actually. Uh, yeah, within half an hour of us, there's probably a dozen Morris sides say because we we kind of um, where we are, we're within reach of Exeter, Torbay, most of South Devon and Plymouth. So. Um, and parts of Dartmoor as well. So, so there's, there's, yeah, there is quite a lot of um, of competition. I did, I did do some stats actually on the on the population and the number of Morris dancers. And I think our, that there's kind of a higher portion of the population that do Morris dancing down here than the than the sort of national average. I think so. <laughs> but I mean, sorry, just sorry, more. I mean, because of my ignorance of the geography as well, I do apologise for that. What sort of physical distance are we talking about to these other places? Um, sure, I don't know where your centre is. Oh, so so our centre is in is in Chudley, and uh, and one of the reasons why we positioned it there is because it's within half an hour's drive of Exeter, Torbay, and and Plymouth, which are the main sort okay, of Thank population you. centres. Yeah, yeah. So if oh. if you if you position yourself in the in the sticks, then I always think people are willing to sort of drive about half an hour to practice. Most people, I know, Liz sort of travels. Um, Right the way across Devon, which is sort of a couple of you know over an hour or so, but um, she's, she's incredibly keen. Uh, but I, th I think the majority of people are, you know, are willing to sort of travel only half an hour. So so it's trying to sort of position yourself where you can you've got the kind of biggest pool of people, I suppose. So um, yeah, interesting idea being able to position yourself. There you go. But that's fine. I will, I'll, 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 that was it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Nigel. Uh, Tom. Hi. Uh, very much a new boy when it comes to border. I'm, I've been Cotswold for few decades now and I'm, I'm very much enjoying the border as well uh just a quick question about the cd you've done the cds was that in a studio or at a performance or in between um we did uh we did one in a in a studio but generally it's just uh whoever's got recording equipment um, will go around their house and uh, naively think it won't take very long and then it takes weeks <laughs> But it's it's I think it's a really positive thing because uh, all of our CDs have been a mix of the dance tunes and individuals singing um, tunes that they're sort of passionate about. So it's kind of a you, you, you get often get the same tunes that the dance tunes on subsequent CDs, which are about five years apart. But the sound's quite different because you've got different members in the yeah. band and, uh, and and different emphasis on drumming or um, have a fiddle instead of a recorder. Um, so actually, I, I'd, I'd really encourage it, and um, and, and they're, they're good fun, and we, we get a lot of good feedback about them, and it's quite nice for people to take something physical away. Those are those people that still, like myself, have a CD player, of course. So we've not stepped into oh, yeah. the world of Spotify and that sort of thing, but I think with Spotify, you know, you make you make a, a millionth of a penny or something per play or something ridiculous. So you you probably only make thruppence in a year so but but at least a cd is is quite a nice physical thing and mm. hopefully um yeah we, we can carry on selling those brilliant thank you brilliant. thanks tom and uh thank you. thank you very much to ant um i have to say that first time i saw beltane i bought their cd so oh, thanks <laughs> that was several <laughs> thanks. years ago now um okay thank you very much Ant. and um we're gonna uh, go over to michael stimpson now uh from phoenix morris and phoenix are a member of all the three morris organizations so michael do you want to start your um, screen sharing right uh, have i got that right pauline it, it's okay uh right so well i'm it was my idea to to, to run this uh, uh event and uh, um getting new members is essential uh, the side that stops recruiting will slowly die and i've seen a number of Norris sides die for the simple reason that their numbers have dwindled people die people move away people decide to give up um oh, what do i do now from beginning right um try that um so there are a number of ways you can get new members first of all is advertising um you don't need to pay for advertising although some sides do put adverts in um magazines from folk clubs etc uh but what you need to do is to uh send out oh try that one there we are um send out press releases uh if well written your local paper will print it exactly as you 
who have written it include a photo or two. Um, I used to send out press releases for Phoenix um, on a regular basis and they all got totally ignored. And then we got somebody join the side who used to be um, uh, somebody who worked for a, uh, a reporter for a local paper. She started writing them and they, they swallowed every one. And we got quite a lot of uh, um, press coverage. So you need to send them out on a regular basis, but uh, you need someone who's, who knows how to write them. Social media, that's already been dealt with and again will be dealt with later. Handouts. Have handouts ready to give out to publicise your side when you're dancing out. Uh, that, that is essential. Um, you can print them off yourself using uh, your printer at home. A4, it's easy to print off from your own printer, um, but um, it doesn't look very professional. A4 printed A5 or trifold. Um, some printers can double print double sided, um, and the same with A5. A5 single or double sided flyers. Um, Phoenix have theirs um, on a um, printed on a professional basis, but quite a lot of sides are turning to postcard side cards. Um, they're easier to carry around with all five members having them. Professionally printed cards can cost in the region of £62 for a thousand or £129 for £5,000. Um, so you can see that there's economy of scale there. So don't put anything on there that is going to get out of date. So for instance, don't put your um, the dance outdates on there because they will become uh, out of date fairly quickly. Direct people to your website. Most sites have a website. So you need a photograph of your side on one side and details of where and when you practice on the reverse with contact details, website address and how to book, book your side for events as well as reasons to join. Um, next one. Sorry, this is the, only the second time I've used PowerPoint. Um, reasons to join. Uh, the three main reasons people seem to want to join is it keeps fit, keeping a tradition alive, and social uh, social interaction. That means that the side um, all get together and do things other than Morris dancing. Uh, Phoenix have a uh, an annual dinner every year, and uh, next weekend we're joining in with a local council quiz. Um, we've got two tables there. Um, No, oh, that one. Use of cards. Sorry. Hand them out. Oh, sorry. So, use of these cards. Um, hand them out whilst dancing. Get members of your side to go around the audience and chat to people. Leave in places with permissions, such as local libraries, taxi ranks, pubs and cafes, surgeries, community centres. Oh, I spelled that wrong. Sports clubs and anywhere else in your locality where they can be seen and picked up. Recruiting whilst dancing. Local pub nights and events. Not folk festivals and dance outs away from home, although of course have your cards with you in case somebody expresses an interest. Um, we were dancing at Swanage uh, a couple of years back and somebody um, was watching us who came from Watford, which is the next town over from us. Involve members of your audience. Get them to join in on a dance, give them a simple dance and then chat to them afterwards about uh, coming on to a practice night. Have a go night. These are, it is essential to organise these well in advance, uh, publicise it well through the local press and uh, posters in local notice boards if you've got them. Have tea and coffee available. Um, welcome everyone who attends and let them see what a nice lot of people you are. Mm -hmm. Duke of Edinburgh Award. This is a great way to recruit new members because um, people are looking for things to do to earn their Duke of Edinburgh award. And we discovered that um, Morris dancing counts. Um, we've recruited three new members um, and one of them brought his mother along. Um, so we've now got um, four new members uh, uh, resulting out of the Duke of Edinburgh award. <coughs> um, he had to bring his mother along because he was uh, um, 16 when he joined. 
Um, so we said, well, you, you can, you're welcome to come to practice, but you need to have an adult with you. Um, a good percentage will stay with your side, even if they go to university, which is a distance from you. Um, the one I mentioned earlier is, is now at Southampton University, but still dances with us. Um, and uh, another one went to university, has now left and still dances with us on occasion. Giving talks. Now, if you give a talk, um, you can give a talk to U3A and the local church, all sorts of organisations are looking for people to give talks to their members. Let it, letting it be known that you can provide a talk via your website and on your cards is a, a good way to earn some money for the side because you can charge for giving a talk. We charge £50 pounds, um, and you have the possibility of recruiting new members take your cards with you. What you do here is you uh, agree to do a talk, you turn up, uh, in our case with uh, me to do the talk, six dancers to do the dance and, and one musician, so you only need eight people, uh, unless you've got eight person dancers, of course, in which case you need the extra two. Um, and again, we've recruited people uh, for this, but the um, usual thing is that uh, um, we've earned some money for the side, and um, turn up to uh, these events and uh, have the opportunity of uh, um, recruiting people. Um, turn up with enough dancers, as I mentioned earlier, to form a set with a musician. You'll need a slide projector, which is how I used to do this, or a computer projector and screen. Uh, now, computer projectors can be expensive, so if you contact your local um, uh, county councillor, you can ask for a grant uh, under their locality budget. And if you get that, then the locality budget will pay for the uh, projector, um, which you can plug into your laptop. And using PowerPoint, um, you can use that as a, as a slide display rather than the old fashioned. Um, uh, my wife says that nobody has slide projectors anymore. I've got two, but, uh, <laughs> but then I still think uh, Windows 3.5 is modern. Um, you need to have a talk that is split into um, bits, so you can talk about the history of Morris, the different types of Morris, uh, and the history of your side and what it does. Uh, and if you uh, collect money and donate it to charity, which we do, you can mention that as well. Um, and this uh, talk can be uh, split into four parts, and in between the four parts, the uh, dancers that you've taken along can perform, which uh, makes it a very interesting evening for the people that have booked you. Recruiting is a job for every member of the side. Pauline said earlier that uh, uh, Morris dancers were. Um, uh, outgoing by nature, but that's not necessarily the case. I've got a couple of people in my side that won't say go to a goof. Um, but uh, whether you're dancing out or giving a talk or having a go, everyone needs to talk to people about joining your side and stress that you have fun while keeping fit and keeping the tradition alive. Oh, I think that's the last slide. So um, it is something that every side member needs to to try and get involved in more than others. Some of the side uh, will be more active in this area than others. Other, others will not want to do it. But make sure every side member has got postcards or leaflets on them. And if they start talking to people, get them to come along to a practice night. Thank you, Pauline. I think I'm within my time. <laughs> no, you're perfect. Uh, Michael, do you want to uh, stop screen share now? Uh, oh, I can do it for you. Let's do that. I think. So there we go. Oh, there we are. Stop screen. Right. There we go. Yeah. So I'm actually, uh, while other people are thinking of questions, I've got one. Uh, you mentioned the D of E. Um, so how do you, um, do you actually send someone into the your local sixth form schools or how does that work? Yes, we uh, sent the leaflets around to uh, the local um, uh, big school um, and um, asked if we could leave our leaflets at the in the sixth form common room, and that's how we got them. All right. So, and 
Uh, thank you, Michael. Um, other questions for Michael? They seem to have been quite successful in recruitment, haven't you, um, Michael, lately? How many people have you got in your team? Uh, 40. 40, yeah. Oh, Helen. Go on, Helen. Um, just a question about the Duke of Edinburgh Award thing. Presumably then you have to all, or some of you at least, have to have some kind of um, safeguarding training. Is that correct? If they're under 18, we ask them to bring their parents with them, which they're, they're, they've always been happy to do. Okay, thanks. And, and that way we recruited a mother as well. And do you find with the cards that you, do you find it any different cards or leaflets when you're giving them out at um, performances? Do people prefer one or the other? Um, I think that the, the cards are a much better idea. Our next uh, leaflet will be in, in postcard form. At the moment, we've got two-sided A5, which we had 5,000 printed, and we've still got about 1,000 left. So we're um, getting rid of those and going over to cards. Yeah, you mean business card size? Or do you mean postcards? No, postcard size. You have a side on one side and details of how to contact the side, um, the website details, where you practice, uh, how you can contact us if you want to dance out, and uh, uh, information about joining the side. Uh, Randall? Randall, you're muted. Randall, you're muted. Ah, start again. Okay, Randall, off you go. I think I've forgotten my question now. <laughs> Um, on your um, have a go get togethers, do you uh, have a fixed period or, or number of sessions that you arrange in a, in a, uh, a year? Or do you have a, an ad hoc session as and when somebody shows interest? Uh, no, we, we, when we've had them in the past, since um, COVID, we haven't actually run one, but um, we used to have uh, a night in uh, end of September, beginning of October. Um, and the biggest debate was whether we should wear kit or ordinary clothes. Um, and some have been successful. We had one where nobody turned up at all, and others we had half a dozen, and we, we kept four of them. But it's essential if you're organising such an evening to publicise it well in advance and um, stress the keep fit side of it. People. Okay. Any more questions for Michael? No, if not, we'll have a we'll have a short break now. So if we take five minutes and I'll see you back in five minutes. Thank you. If you wish to talk amongst yourselves, you can. I will pause the recording. OK, thank you very much. And I'm now handing over to uh, Dan from Glastonbury Morris. Thank you. Yes, it's lovely to see so many people here and obviously Tom and Mandy who've been joining us fairly recently and uh, this is something that's lovely to be invited and thank you to all the other speakers. I bet that's some really good tips. I hope that um, this is going to focus a bit on social media and it's based on uh, a lot of the fact that I've made a lot of mistakes and I have learned some things that work well and it's anything to save time and effort and uh, it takes a, a lot of time <clears throat> making these posts and videos and uh, if it's a bit disheartening if you've done it and uh, it ends up not going anywhere so um, the other thing as well is that it can take a lot of time to to make videos and posts and um, there are easy quick ways that I've found that can save a lot of time um, first one is that if you're using Facebook like most of us are if you're not using Facebook business suite then I very much recommend doing it it's something you can get as an app on your phone or you can go onto the website and it very quickly shows you how you, um, it's called the meta business site now, but it can give you some really good idea about what of your, what posts worked well, when 
people reacted and engaged with them that's either like or comment and uh, also <clears throat> the great thing is if you've I find that with social media um, just putting one post out there sometimes does the trick but if you're continuing wanting to recruit people then scheduling many repeats or variations on the same theme works very well and this allows you to uh, create a post and then schedule it for different times of day and different days of the week so uh, one thing that we do um, quite often is we we will uh, <clears throat> go go for different styles and colors for different events and um, this is one we've gone for pride so we use that as an example of different uh, examples of, of how we'd recruit um, people and when we want people to to uh, to join us to to add something different and in um, our sort of um, Halloween season we become crew Morris so we have a, a different sort of black and white effect and um, become crow so that's something that people join us for quite often just for that season and uh, by having those posts regularly um, updating and uh, and and going out regularly sometimes you'll find that you know the morning works better for some of these these engagements and sometimes a Wednesday will work better than a Monday for whatever reason it just makes it a lot easier and the nice thing as well is that you can schedule it to um, to also go across your Instagram if you're using that as well so the same post can just go across on uh, on different platforms at once and that makes it a lot easier um, I find that I don't really tend to use Instagram that much on a day-to-day -day basis but if I've got all everything set up then you can schedule it so it's hitting two places at once in the, some different audiences like uh, Ant said some people are very much a um, user of Instagram rather than Facebook and a lot of people don't bother with it nowadays uh, for different age categories <clears throat> so just going back to the presentation again the other thing that's um I find is is really good way to you can look at these analytics and actually see that after a year or so um, you get some really good insights and actually um, a lot of the engagements came not just from sort of local areas but all over the UK and include we seem to have quite a good following in America now, I'm sure that Beltane and some of the other groups are finding that their their reach is all over and even if people aren't actually um, able to come and join you as a side you basically build up an online audience of supporters who post and share your stuff all the time and that's a great recruitment tool so um, I'm sure other people have found exactly the same thing as well so just keeping those posts interesting and varying them um, we do like to put as much humor in there as well as possible and we boost our community engagement and the fact it's a very friendly side as well and any USBs that you might have so we actually um, love to have children join us as well so men women and children and, and uh, it's quite nice for say parents who want to do something of an evening they can come and bring their kids and they can either join in or just enjoy sort of playing with the other they, the kids can play together while they come out which is really family orientated and we've had quite a few parents join us and it's great for them to, to get out and engage like that as well and also a lot of musicians as well have joined us um, and they've really joined in the the orchestra that we form now and we've got a great sort of 10 musicians who sound fantastic and uh, like uh, Beltane as well it's amazing the more musicians you've got creates a really great vibe and energy and that transfers onto the dancers and then those videos you've taken afterwards I did try experimenting with some Facebook adverts and I'm sure other sides have and with mixed results you can quite easily spend 20 or 30 quid and it might end up getting to a further reach but do people actually turn up and I found that really it's just easier to ask your show, your audience to share your posts to your own social media their own social media page, pages that works very well and that can sort of soon get to thousands more people than just by paying for it uh, as I say scheduling them from different times of day and also I'm going to go on to a little bit more um, quite a lot of these social media platforms allow you to be able to post to different social media platforms in one go so um, I find that TikTok's a very useful one just for making a quick simple video and that can just once you've got it you can share it very easily as well um, and that hits different audiences because um, I know we always think that TikTok is actually just for young people but actually 
more and more people are engaging with it more and more um, from all age groups as well, finding it simple to use. And uh, I'll show you why I find it's um, actually been very effective. So you can use the app on your phone. Um, this is actually the desktop version. And just a couple of these little pictures that I've, uh, videos I created, some of them just literally took a minute on my phone to create. It just takes you upload one video. Um, you can pick and choose a background bit of music or the, the music that you've recorded yourself, put quite a simple bit of text and, um, depends if you, if you add, um, hashtags as well, uh, Morris dancing and TikTok traditions are the ones that usually pick up very well. People can like them and share them and really engage with them. And even if they, they're not actually up for joining it, they can share it with their friends as well. And, and uh, it just keeps that movement going. There's more and more Morris sides who are joining TikTok now, and it's going very, very well, I think. And it's a good way to, I find, to make a very simple, quick 30 second video just in a couple of minutes. And you can then quickly share it to Facebook and you can download it, share it all over to the other places as well. That's the main reason why I find it uh, such a useful tool. Just going to give you a little example of what we got here. Now, hopefully, can you let me know if this sound works all right? Can anyone say if that works right? You have to click on that thing and then it'll just, yeah, no, it's not working. Okay, cool. Thank you. Anyway, <clears throat> I won't, uh, won't take too much of the time, but basically it's really a nice, effective way to create some very effective videos very quickly. And um, it works well and you can see how quickly people engage with them. There's just a couple of them that have picked up really well from things like, um, just using, just focusing on our pride event and some of those have, have managed to get um, almost a thousand views, which is great. This is just an example of one that's um, very easy to add different video effects to. Some of them, you know, might be cheesy, but um, I find that people just like to see Morris dancing with different effects and, um, and engage people of different levels and think, oh, that's interesting. Anything that, that stands out is good. And also I find it's really helpful when you actually, um, you can quite easily overlay some really contemporary chart music or dance music. And people really love to see Morris dancing um, with different background music. And they're, they're like, oh, right, this is actually quite cool. I'm gonna get into this and explore more. And they realize how wide ranging some of these um, amazing um, dances we are that we all do and uh, helps get that new audience. Going back to the last section here as well. Um, I haven't given, given a huge amount of YouTube use, but um, I have found that if you can ask your local community, if there's anyone who does have the skills to use, um, to create YouTube videos, it's very, very effective. It's something that doesn't, um, I did spend about 50 pound to, get someone to actually make some videos for us. And uh, that was money well spent, but other people in your local area might be happy to do that just as a sort of more of a, an experiment, just as some um, experience. So this is, this is very useful to have those videos up there, but we've now got some people who want to come along and just film us and it's wonderful to do and they can do all that sharing. And they're great show reels as well. So you've got some good and in um, engagement with here and if you don't already use it there's something called the YouTube studio which allows you to just monitor how much of your videos are being observed with and how they're doing and you can change your channel and modify them as well and upload stuff from there as well so I do think that asking your local community for for experts is one way that they might not be dancers or musicians but they they love to do it for their own experience and uh, skills and for their own CV and local, speaking to local sixth form or um, art colleges as well is one thing some people might want to do that as as a project as a, an art project or a, an IT project so that's a very useful skill as well and <clears throat> just a little thing little tip that I've got as well um, 
I think Ant mentioned all the merchandise and everything else that's used. When we do all these wonderful performances, it's great when you can sell badges and things and people can take things away with them. And um, I found that there's this site that I use a lot called Big Cartel, where you can put up very simple um, items for sale. And we've just got some mugs here. You can list 30, um, up to five items for free. And we've just got a mug, but you could put your CDs on your other things like badges on there as well. And um, it links into your PayPal account very simply. And it's not that well known, but um, a lot of these other sites and other things are really complicated to actually um, get up and running with websites. But this one is very simple. You can even use an app if you want to. And uh, it just makes life a lot easier to, to go along and, and use it. So um, I do recommend that you can add discount codes and you know half price for your own members if you want to. And um, it just links in here for, we haven't had a huge amount because we sold out of these quickly, which is good news, but um, it's very easy to, to sell badges and mugs and just keep that money coming in, but also having more products and t-shirts and things out there, put your name out there and your identity means more engagement. So um, if there's anything else that you need to, um, to have advice for, then I'm happy to give advice as well. And um, I'll probably give it a bit of a, a rest there as well, but um, so that there's more chance for people to have questions as well. And if there's anyone else who has um, anything specific, I'm happy to follow up after this finishes as well. All right, thank you, Dan. So uh, questions, who'd like to go first? Brian? Hi Dan, <clears throat> thank you, thank, thank, thanks for that. I noticed in the business suite for Facebook that there was an option A-B tests. Um, I wondered if you've done any of these tests where you can get statistics on which things work or is that just restricted to if you've got an ad campaign? Uh, no, that's something I did have a go at because um, I do have some other projects in this to explain what A-B tests are. It's basically um, you can upload a video or a photo and Facebook will automatically try different variations to see which will work best at certain, well, no, certain styles of advert and it will go with the one that, that works better for you. Um, for a different project that I have tried that before and it's really good because Facebook does um, a lot of the work for you. Um, so it will, it will, by uploading a couple of videos, it's all about different types of engagement. I would say as Brian said in his workshop this morning, people really do love videos. Um, anything that's short and sweet to the point that grabs people in the first couple of seconds really take off. They're not so much on sort of reading a great amount of text. So um, they, they really do work well. Yeah, that's, I think that's true, Dan. And, and Morris also lends itself perfectly to videos, doesn't it, really? So um, anyway, over to Ant. Thanks very much. That was a great talk, um, Dan. So it's, it's good to hear that, um, that you're sort of uh, family oriented as well, because we've sort of stepped into the world of families a bit more because my, when my kids were young, they stayed at home. But uh, we've got a couple of kids that come along to practice now and they're quite entertaining. Um, but my question's um, related to TikTok, actually. It's something that my kids use all the time and they're sort of obsessed by watching these little videos and that, but I know nothing about it at all. But I, I was, and you were saying that it's, really easy to to record and just upload videos um you know in a matter of matter of minutes um we we use the uh, the facebook insights quite a lot is is there a similar sort of thing with with tiktok where you can sort of track sort of how successful videos are and who's watching them and when There is indeed, yes. Um, this is a desktop version, which is on, on the laptop, but on your phone, it will show you how many people have um, viewed it. And then inside, you'll also have how many people have engaged with it. And um, a lot of people who, if you are gonna um, put a video up there, what what we want people to, to really do is not just like, but also um, on their phones, you can save, uh, you can follow the, the person so that every time they're notified um, when you've posted a new video and that sort of means that 
people, it will crop up more and more in what people call their for you page. So if you like something, then you'll just get um, lots of things that TikTok thinks you're going to enjoy, however accurate that is or not. But if you like a lot of Morris dancing stuff, then you should start to see more stuff by Beltane and similar Morris groups and the wonderful Morris Federation videos as well, of course. Um, so it does it does give that feedback that so many people have played. But um, when you on your phone as well, it will give you the, the insights and in how many people have engaged with it. Oh, so it's really good. So it will sort of connect you up with other Morris dancers and Morris sides and uh, sort of build a community. So, so and there is quite a community on there now, is there? So. There is more and more and hopefully I encourage people to to join it, um, even if you're not planning to post that much stuff on there, because it literally is just so simple to you, this this thing. I just had an existing video um, quite simply adding a bit of text at the top and then you can download it and share it and it all just links across so simply to um to other platforms when you when you post it there it will give you the option to put it instantaneously onto um, Instagram and Twitter if you want to as well hit them all at once and um, da, 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 yeah. da, could you just click on that hash Morris dancing tag so we can see the things that are un aggregated under that and the 7.5 million views and look um, it's the wrong type well, of Morris dancing yeah you might get um, quite a lot of uh, as I think Brian mentioned earlier um, American, um, I think they call it fluffy dancing, uh, that sort of, you know, pom-poms and everything like that. But um, generally, there's getting more and more um, of our type of Morris dancing over here as well, which is which is picking up well. Um, sometimes I always put it in for all sorts of random stuff, but 7.5 million views of this type of thing is good. Brilliant, thanks. Thank you. More, any more questions for Dan? Any more, any more? Any more, Is that Nigel? Nigel. Might want to put your camera on, Nigel. Oh, there we go. We get no, to see. don't worry, don't worry. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, sorry, <laughs> I was holding back to let everybody have first dibs. I've got a number of comments about that sort of thing. I'm taking it that, I mean, I've never really looked. We, I do Facebook for our team, but um, things like that business suite with the name puts me off, but um, they don't charge for it, do they? Because that's no, only, no, it's it free. Comes it's out free. the advertising <laughs> revenue that you may or may not give to them as a result of it. Yeah, it all it all comes up free, and the the I recommend downloading the app onto your phone, which is free as well, nice and simple. Okay, and my next question was, um, and this might be interesting if anybody else is the sort of social media board for a particular side. How much time do you have to spend doing it to get to get to to make it worthwhile? That's a good question. Let's have a think. <laughs> Ooh, thank you. <laughs> it depends on, on, I found that um, if you've got a good bunch of people sending photos into you and a good team like we have, then if you share the load um, between like Mandy and Tom are sharing stuff now as well, if your team are all sort of able to or admins, then uh, the more, more you share to get it up there as quickly as possible is good. Um, I'd say like, I know half an hour to an hour a week is is quite good okay. for for the amount of stuff I would do but um if other people are able to do it as well um the more the merrier and to make sure that it's not just yourself doing that and if other people are capable making them administrators as well on your Facebook page is really helpful yeah, yeah we have we have we have three I mean the thing like the thing that we, is limited we have a limited penetration across our side now I've got a horrible feeling this is this is just age related that um, it, it's nice to see the younger sides here. Um, and, you know, we have members of all different ages, but largely at the, the higher end of the scale. And most of them don't even use um, social media. So this is, this, is, this is the other thing. I think the three of us use social media and two of us are reasonably active on it. And we have one, our new, one of our newest members has actually taken over on that, doing a lot on that. So Good. it's an interesting point though, you know, what you're saying, but thank you. I appreciate all that. I'm sure other other sides might have different experience with it, but um, I'd love to know what they are, basically. <laughs> yeah. So it sounds like TikTok can post to automatically post to Instagram, did you say? And but not Facebook. Was it 
not Facebook. So, yeah, we can do Facebook and it can do Instagram all in one hit, which oh, it can. Saves, saves a lot of time and effort. So you shouldn't need to use, so if you just use TikTok as your interface, that could be it. It could be. Um, just trying to bring it up as well, but it's um, it's up to you. It's always, always good to have a little bit of a, a, a bit of a, a mix between the two of them. But when you've made a, a nice, simple video, it's good to be able to um, say you're having to post it all over the place, really. Mm, yeah. Any more questions for Dan? Um, just a comment, really, Dan. Well done. Um, just thinking about the the earlier talk where we had the age range, etc. The more and this Duke of Edinburgh thing was really interesting. So the more younger people we attract by using things like the Duke of Edinburgh, the more people we'll get who are into these social media, you know, like TikTok, and will probably be able to help us. So I think it's a really good idea to encourage as many young people as possible if some of the old people in the side are feeling a bit nervous about it that's just my comment it's a very good point and it's one that we're definitely going to try and work on and i encourage any other things like any other advice we can continue to share that as well it's a really good idea any more for any more yes graham Sorry, you need to unmute, Graham, if you want to ask a question. Can everybody hear me now? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, there's, uh, I'm interested in these conversations about age-related, and particularly the your last speaker, Dan. Um, what evidence do you have that these really short-term promotional devices like TikTok and Instagram and Twitter have actually produced members for your side? I, I have a real suspicion that I have a real concern that they don't. They get you out there. They get you, they get promotion, but it seems to me that with a lot of these, the, the the attention span of so many people is so damn short, a matter of seconds or a minute at the most. I wonder if that's really the sort of audience that gets you members. Thank you. That's a good good point, and um, it's one that certainly I think gets gets attention initially but it takes um quite a few videos and posts in combination with that to, to get someone to actually think right this is something i'm really going to engage with and uh, want to join as well i think really just um well chosen videos and useful information with the relevant links about how to join is is the key rather than just putting it up there just just to show you look here we are and um <clears throat> i think that it just means that there's so much out there particularly on Instagram and TikTok with these ones. Um, a lot of people are on Facebook, but just having something that, that quickly engages you in the first 10 seconds makes people find out more and stick with it. And it just um, find it's something that was reflected by Brian's talk this morning at 11 o'clock, which I encourage everyone else to watch as well. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not disputing the, uh, the fact that you get exposure this way, but how many new members have you gained from this exposure? That's the measure of success after all. Yeah, I think from, I had um, over the time, three or so people who never use Facebook, who um, found us on Instagram, who've contacted us. That's my own experience. But I think overall with social media and videos, we've had sort of half from recruitment, half from various sorts of social media, and particularly the ones um, that picked up on, on Instagram are the ones that spring to mind myself. Mm. Well, we've got a queue of people on now, so maybe they've got the answers to this. Thanks, Graham. Good question, though, Graham. Uh, Liz, you're muted. Liz, you're muted. Sorry. Uh, I've got just a short comment to add to that uh, with regard to that recruitment, because when we put um, our annual little recruitment post on Facebook and Instagram. Um, we get a, a, a stream of sort of comments. Oh, I'd love to come and blah, 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 and I'm coming. And actually, I did a little analysis or kept a record of who had names of people who had made a comment that they were going to come to our recruitment day. And in fact, none of them came, mm -hmm. not one. We did have lots of people that that came to the recruitment, but they hadn't commented. I don't know if there's, you know, <laughs> they just obviously saw it or came by another 
way, I think some by word of mouth from friends and so on. So it's just interesting that those who have kind of made an instant response of, yeah, you know, they're coming, none mm. of them did actually come in the end. So, I don't know how point. successful it is, but I think you have to just, you know, try all means and media. That's exactly it. And, and one thing that I found has been um, really useful as well is that um, this business, Facebook business suite allows you to set up um, automatic replies. So everyone does get a reply quickly because if people reply and uh, or comment and they say, right, OK, we're interested, you actually can quickly see all those comments and then say please do come along to our session on Wednesday between whenever and also with the messages it's not just me who see them we've got a couple of other people who have access and um, it's actually a case of just chasing up saying you know you made a comment and uh, and you obviously like us please do come along and actually that actually yeah. grabs people and it's a lot easier to do if you've got the app and um, thank you in fact, while we've been talking here earlier today, between the two things, we've had some a new musician contact us as well. So just having those videos coming up and it's it really does pay um, to, to keep a good eye on it. Yeah, thank, thank you. Uh, Tom? Um, I am a product of this uh, newfangled social media thing, uh, joining a team. The thing that got me, I looked at a few teams locally, and the thing that got me to join Glastonbury was it was dead easy to see who to contact, where the practice was and when. And it was as simple as that. It was no messing. I didn't have to trail through some website and try and find contact details. It was right there. And that's why I joined Glastonbury. Great, mm. I'm glad it worked well. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Tom. You. Cheers. Uh, got a couple of, yeah, we need to move on soon, but Malcolm and then Ant. Yeah, hi. Um, right, it's a quick question. Um, our side, um, to we say, tend towards the upper end of the age demographic. Um, has anyone got any insights or thoughts on how to get younger members, younger recruits to a side which is already fairly old um, or all the members are fairly old? Do you want to take that at the end as that's a ge generic question or does somebody one of our speakers want to answer that now yeah please go ahead if anyone has any ideas please do volunteer them i mean it's a problem that social dancers um suffer as well but um it, it's very much a problem for us uh michael they have quite a wide age range in phoenix do you want to answer that Yes, I mean, our youngest dancer is 16, our oldest is 80, and we've spread across the uh, entire age range. Um, the, the important thing is to recruit at, at the younger age, um, and as I mentioned earlier, the Duke of Edinburgh's ward is uh, uh, something that uh, uh, works quite well. Um, but getting people into the side um, when you're dancing out is also a good way. And, and of course, um, the younger you start them, the, the longer they stay with you. Yeah. Okay. I mean, one of one of our issues, perhaps, is finding locations where younger people actually are. I mean, obviously, we, you know, historically, we pubs and things, but um, pubs these days are not really that good a hunting ground for recruiting. So, um, Duke of Edinburgh is interesting, but um, and any any other thoughts would be very welcome. So, my side has quite a lot of young younger dancers, but that's I think we're in a bit of a weird situation because we are a university affili affiliated side. So, lots of people, myself included, joined as students at because it's it's sort of it is technically a student society. We tend to joke that it's sort of charades as one because it's much more Morris side. We don't have that many students, but we have a sort of, the pandemic's put a bit of a stint on our recruitment. But um, the, so I, yeah, if you have any universities nearby, um, obviously it's going to be harder if you're not actually a kind of affiliated student society. But like one of the things we're thinking of doing because we we've got a problem at the moment where our normal supply of kind of you know two to five students a year dried up in the pandemic where so we've got not very many people with like student cards who can get on 
university kind of grounds like Freshers' Fair and stuff. So we're planning on doing stuff like dancing around the edges of Freshers' Fair this September so that people can see us en route to that and potentially, hopefully, join up. So I don't know. That's that's just sharing what we're thinking at the moment, kind of facing our problem of how we get students when we don't have very many students in the side at the moment. It's somehow going to where they are, isn't it? Um, I know in Crook Morris, they got a recruit by dancing at the one of the young farmers um, they're in Cumbria. So one of the young farmers events they were invited to and they danced there and they managed to get a recruit. That was years ago, but it's kind of trying to find out where, as you said, trying to find out where they mm. are, not. Uh, and going to them, really. Um, and can I move on? But do have a think about it. We can come back to the end if we've got time, because I think it's a common problem that... Um, yeah, I don't think it's just us. Thank it's you. not just you, no. No, it's a common problem, Malcolm. Um, and did you want to add something? Yeah, yeah or just, just quickly on that one. Um, so about 15 years ago, Beltane was getting a bit older, but we uh, were invited to dance to Beautiful Days Folk for, uh, Festival, which was a wider sort of folk uh, uh, festival um, and we managed to recruit some younger people from that in their 30s so uh, and with regards to the um, proportion of people that joined because of because they saw something on Facebook um, about one in six Beltane members joined either as a primary reason or a secondary reason because they saw us on Facebook so so actually in terms of um, uh, attracting people through digital means then that's been that's been quite useful for us and it has tended to sort of perhaps be people in their sort of 30s and 40s sort of maybe at the younger end would, would you agree Liz I don't, I don't know um I, I think so it has been useful for us but uh, but obviously it's it's the way that you kind of market yourself I suppose so uh, so package it up thanks yeah, yeah. 30s and 40s would be young for us as well yeah, yeah. oh yeah. good luck so yeah. That would be good for lots of us, I think. Yeah, thank you. Right, um, we need to move on, and I'm sorry we've squeezed Ollie for time now. So, um, can we move on to Ollie Simons from Peterborough Morris, please? Yes, hello. Um, I don't have a, a presentation or anything, but I, I will be just sharing my screen at, at one point just to um, show something. So, um, so I'm going to start off with associations to local organisations and other things, um, other local things that you can do um, within your club, because, you know, it is great to you know go along to major folk festivals or further afield or, you know, uh, days of dances elsewhere. But you are going to struggle um, if you are trying to recruit from those events, because it's going to be very difficult to, if any, to find someone who's there who is actually from your location so it's very important to focus your recruitment on your local area now all of our speakers today have you know have said this in a way but i think it's uh, good to just start off with um with the phrase you know and it's something that we try to do in peter Morris is that recruitment is not something to think about in september or october when you're about to get back to practice it's something that should be in your mind throughout the whole year. So when you're practicing, when you're doing Boxing Day dance outs, May Day, pub nights, the whole thing, that is when you should always be thinking about recruitment uh, because you never know, someone might come along um, and you need to be there and prepared to tell them the information that's needed. Great, so moving on. So in Peterborough, um, I'm just going to touch lightly on social media because I know we've we've done lots on social media and it's great. Um, but in Peterborough, we've got uh, three main social media accounts um, which are run independent by just some people that live in Peterborough um, called so that they're, they're called We Love Peterborough, Everything Peterborough and Proud of Peterborough. So these are three accounts that just people who live in Peterborough have set up to publicize and to showcase the amazing things that happen in Peterborough. Now, over the years, Peterborough Morris, we have gained a connection with all three of these um, by, first of all, we were contacting them about our dance outs and about anything that we were doing recruitment wise. But now we've got on A relationship with these three um keep on top of our um on top of our um 
posts that we put out on Facebook or on our websites, and they will then come along to our events and they will publicize it without us um, needing to uh, prompt them. So I'm just quickly going to show you uh, two of them, uh, if I, or I might not. Uh, it's not working, so never mind. It's fine. Uh, one of them was just going to be a YouTube account of um, of uh, everything Peterborough, and that's they turned up at our Day of Dance. Um, every year they've come along and they have recorded all the sides that have attended, put all of their contact details of those sides there. Um, so not only is it benefiting Peterborough Morris, but it's also benefiting the other clubs because they've then got videos that they can share and this is publicity. And again, with We Love Peterborough, they um, publicise on their Facebook account um, without us having to prompt them. Um, so it might be good to have a look in your local area if you have something like that. Um, I know like in Ely, so for like Devil's Dyke, there's um, a group called you know, Spotted in Ely. I'm sure you've got other things like that. It might be good to get in touch with things with those sort of um, you know, independently ran uh, social media accounts and try and work up a little partnership with them because it's worked for us um, getting ourselves out there. Other sort of local organisations it's good to get involved with are like-minded social groups because yes Morris dancing is all about the dancing and uh, you know and the joy that we get out of doing what we do but it is also a social group and we are um, here to enjoy ourselves get to know people and have fun so a way to recruit as well or to get yourselves out there is to again do WI meeting you know go along and do U3A talks, um, as was touched upon earlier, or even other social groups um, like allotment. You know, if you've got an allotment group that's nearby you, getting in touch with them because you know, so lot of the thing that has in common with all of those groups is that they are a social aspect. You know, they they're a social group that do other things, and you know, some people might see that that is Morris dancing. We are a social group that does dancing. Yes, the dancing is a ma massive part, but we've had some people in Peterborough Morris who've come and joined us for the social, for you know, getting out and meeting people. And the dance is extra and is very good fun, but we've honed in on that social aspect. Um, other groups as well um, is trying to provide um, workshops for scouts and guide groups. Now, of course, those children at that age, they are quite young and they wouldn't be the age that you would what you might want in your club because, you know, of their you know, they're being very young. But the crucial thing is, is that you are giving them a taste of Morris dancing. You are planting that idea into their head and it becomes a long scale, a long timeline um, thing. So we've had some people come along to us that say oh um we did morris dancing at school uh, when i was at primary school I haven't thought about it since but then it just came over me or i saw you guys out so i want to come and try it you know try it again because i've done it before um one thing that i do want to just quickly touch upon is that so that linking with you know doing things for scout and guide groups is that just because your recruitment campaign now doesn't work doesn't mean that in the long run it hasn't been successful just because you know you get people come along but then they don't stay or you don't actually get people come along for your recruitment evening that you set up doesn't mean that they aren't going to continue the morris or join a morris team later on it's setting that seed in their mind um, and getting that thing going um, to drive someone to join the Morris. So don't be disheartened. This is something that I've always said at Peterborough Morris is that, you know, it'd be great if, you know, when we open the doors for our taster evening, you know, hordes and hordes of people come in and they stay forever. That'd be amazing. But I always say, don't get disheartened, you know, if no one turns up or if someone turns up but then doesn't come back again or only comes for a little bit because you never know in the long run that it might actually have been a successful thing. And just at that moment in time, it wasn't for that person. 
Uh, so going back to local things, it's very important, as I said earlier, to be a public face in the community, in your local area. One thing that Peterborough Morris, we try to strive to do is that we try to dance in the city centre quite a lot. We've got a lovely new up and coming city. Um, they're developing it a lot. And we always try to dance out in the city you know, three or four times a year, at different points of the year as well. We do our Boxing Day dance out, our May Day tour, um, as well as our Day of Dance in September and uh, maybe a few other things across the year, as well as pub nights that we try to do in the city centre as well. And then from, from dancing out in the city, that's where we got the We Love Peterborough and stuff like that connections. So, and also, you know, as I say, dancing in your local area, you're more likely to pick up somebody who is likely to join you. But going back to my point of, you know, just because your recruitment wasn't great doesn't mean someone else's recruitment isn't successful. If you are out on a day of dance and someone talks to you, don't be dismissive that they are not going to be able to join your club because the aim of the game here is to keep Morris dancing going. Now, if we can keep Morris dancing going and another team benefits from this person, that's amazing. You know, and you know, they'll all, they'll, they'll, they might always thank you for it. You never know. One project that Peterborough Morris took part in a couple of years ago was a village just outside of Peterborough called Maxi had a village fate and they wanted to have their own Morris dancers. So they got in touch with us and about eight or 10 um, men from the village came along where well, we went to them you know, over the course of sort of four months, giving out three or four um, workshops on how to do Morris dancing and which they then created their own kit and went out and danced at their, uh, at their village fate, which was the end goal. Now, unfortunately, Peter and Morris never, we didn't gain any members from that, but we have still gained contacts with them. Yeah, we, we stay connect, we've stayed connected with them. And for some of them, they, they still had a youngish family, but they've always been, they always have that idea that they would like to get back into the Morris. So that's what I'm referring to earlier of just because it didn't work then doesn't mean it's not going to work in the future. You know, some of these, some of the guys that came along to this project that we did, I have a feeling that in a couple of years time when they're, you know, their children go off to university or whatever, or they take a role back in their step back in their jobs, they might, you know, be looking for something to do and then go, oh, do you remember that time we did that Morris dancing for our village fate? And Peter and Morris taught us, ah, yes, let's go along to that. So as they, even though it wasn't a clear win for us then, it might be in the future. Now, um, I'm going to add just a quick thing in, uh, I forgot, uh, it's sort of a late thing. So about public workshops, um, it's something that Peterborough Morris teamed up with Rutland Morris uh, men uh, in the October of last year, where we ran a public workshop on a Saturday and we just billed it as a come and try Morris dancing. We didn't bill it as come and join Peterborough Morris or come and join Rutland. We did it as a come and try Morris dancing out for you know, a couple of hours on a Saturday. We had about eight people turn up, um, all but one or two were complete novices. Um, a few of them had done it before. Over the course of the, uh, the day, we taught them about four or five different dances, mixture of hanky and stick dances. And at the end of it, two of those dancers have gone on to join either Peterborough or Rutland. Uh, and with one other who's sort of still toying with the idea. But all of them enjoyed the day. Most of the ones who didn't go on to join a club saw it as just a, you know, a day to try Morris dancing, just because, oh, you know, haven't done Morris dancing before, let's give it a try. So, but then a few others, it was very much the case of, oh, you know, this was a great day, thank you very much, but just that my circumstance right now means I cannot um, have the time, I do not have the time to. Uh, commit myself but again who knows down the future that um they might come and try it other public workshops that's happened so pig dyke molly who are a local molly team to peterborough last autumn they ran a charity um sort of program so they they publicized a six-week um scheme where 
It was billed to novices and anyone where they came along at the start of September. And then for six weeks, they learned their dances. And then at the end of the six weeks, they went out and they performed on our local heritage railway and they, they collected for charity. So here's having an end goal. So it's, it gave people who joined, uh, to, joined in with these workshops, a sense of achievement that they were working towards something. It wasn't just, oh, let's go along, do Morris dancing and see where I end up. They had a clear vision of by the end of the six weeks, I'm gonna be dancing out on um, it to public. Some of the people that did it have not continued dancing with them. They just saw it as a fun thing to do. But I do believe that about two or three of the people that joined in with this six week course have stayed and have now become valued members of the club. So it's giving, um, it, it gave people a, a timeline and a clear outcome to their, these practices. And as well, um, we've probably all seen that Boss Morris um, have literally taken you know, Morris onto the stage and by storm uh, with their performance at the Brit Awards. And they've, they're doing a public workshop in London uh, in a couple of weeks time, I believe. And that's a paying workshop. But again, that's being billed as come and try the Morris. Um, with then, of course, the site of hoping that people will then enjoy it and look for their nearby, their closest site. Um, now, um, again, you know, as you know, it's great that Beltane, you're able to um, have it free, but some people um, like the idea, you know, they go along to other dance classes and they will pay, you know, they'll pay for like samba workshops or things, you know, like at your local fitness center. Some people um, prefer, we've you know, I've spoken to some people and they, they like the idea of, you know, sort of paying, um, you know, weekly or monthly for, you know, the idea of these of workshops, because then they feel like they're putting something in to get something out. So it's not just that they're going along to try something, they're actually being more invested. Um, and I know of a team that did a six week course, uh, a bit like Pig Dyke, but it was paid. So you paid, you know, sort of like 20 pounds for the six weeks. Um, so people were putting in to, and it, it was being billed as a dance class, not as a Morris practice. It was being billed as, you know, as a come and learn a dance so very much like if you went to do a, a tap dance class or a modern dance that same aspect so uh, i see that we're uh, we are a bit tight on time so i'm just going to move on to aims of practice now i know the whole of this um you know today is about how to get people through the doors but i thought we'd just quickly touch upon how you know ways of keeping people um because you know as i say it's great when people come along, but the idea is, you know, to keep them because <laughs> that's what you need. Um, and of course, each club you run differently. Um, you will, you will all run your practices differently. So I'm not, you know, telling you how to run practices, but just a few ideas to maybe think about um, how to make them feel a bit more included. So no, rule number one, never put too much pressure on a newbie. You know, if they're completely novice, make sure that they feel welcomed and that they are they are pushed to do more than they think they can but never too much that they are overwhelmed and you know they feel like they are in you know in the deep end of a swimming pool always start with an easy-ish dance but has a high reward um so for Cotswold dancers you know we've got hanky and stick stuff we always find whenever we do a taster evening or a, you know, a workshop or anything, we always find we get the best result when we do a stick dance because um, you get that instant reward of hitting sticks to music and all in time. And, you know, for someone who's never done that before, it's ecstatic. You know, it, you, it's amazing. It's, you know, it's like, wow, look at me. I'm dealing with sticks and it's uh, crazy. So we always try to do stick dances first with novices and then move on to the hanky stuff later on not saying that the hanky stuff isn't as satisfying or as fun to do it's just that for someone who's never done it before a stick stick clashing is more appealing 
Um, and it is always very important to have an open dialogue, um, an open conversation with your newbies to find out exactly why they've joined your club and what they want to get out of your club. Um, we've had over the past couple of years, we've had um, a member who used to be with us, um, you know, 20 years ago left, but has come back and he, yes, wants to come and do dancing, but he's using it more as a social aspect, you know, getting back out and coming to meet. So he's not too fussed about learning lots and lots of dances. As long as he's got half a dozen that he can do a couple over a dance out, that's perfect for him. Whereas we've had other people come along who have always been a musician in their Morris career, but they've come along to us as never danced before. So, you know, again, we've treated them as a newbie, but we've we've prioritized, yes, okay, you can play our tunes, that's great, but you've come here as a dancer. So that is what we're going to be working on. Um, again, pushing them out of their comfort zone, but not too much that you overwhelm them. So it is very important to find out from, because every person that joins your club will have a different reason to why they've joined the club. It might be fitness, you know, social, just something to get out of the house. So it's important to suss that out at the start so you know how to help them um, in their Morris life. And as I said earlier, you know, with the pig dyke workshops and with other stuff, having a clear target that you can give to someone when they join or a couple of weeks in to really give them something to aim at. Uh, in Peterborough Morris, what we try to do is any newbie that joins us in the autumn, we like to try and get them out in kit for straw bear, which is in January. So we always give that clear idea of, you know, buy straw bear, which is, you know, three or four months into the practice season, you will have uh, you know, two or three dances that you can do um, and you'll be out there in public. So it's I think it gives the, your new your newbie a sense of achievement and direction for them to know not to push themselves too much, but they know exactly where they're going. Um, and then once they've done that dance out, they might then all of a sudden want to learn loads more. And that's, you know, that's great. It's getting that confidence um, of performing out in public and performing what they're doing. Um, and just something that we found that work again in Peterborough is having a clear practice program. So giving people a clear idea of what is going to be learned at practices so that people can come with an idea of, um, you know, like tonight we're going to be focusing on our double step dances or, we're going to be focusing on what our arms are doing. It just gives a clear direction at the practice for those newbies um, to know exactly what they're focusing on and what they are you know, letting themselves in for. Um, well, I think that's that's everything from me. <laughs> right, thank you, Olu. Lots of lots and lots of good advice in there. Uh, uh, can I just kick off with a question about your um, like your idea of the public workshops? Did you team up with um, somebody from the local council to offer that or did you just do that off your own bat? How did that work? So the one that we did in October was um, between Peterborough Morris and Rutland. Rutland paid for everything. They paid for the hall hire, the hall hire and a light buffet lunch. Um, it was done completely out of their their pocket so it was a free to attend workshop um we just of course asked for people to sign up beforehand but i think if you um talk to you know community spaces um village halls community groups councils you might find that there is some funding out there for such things or art groups you know if you've got an art fund nearby or whatever you might be able to find um some funding for things like that um especially with you know big things coming up like you know the coronation uh, it might be something to think about to try and coincide with that you know talk to your local council and see if you can get some funding for a you know coronation uh month workshop mm. i'm thinking even more for the advertising as well really mm. You're not. It's not you. Just yourself trying to advertise it. Then maybe you know the art. And if it's you teamed up with an art centre or something, then maybe they will help advertise it. Mm. Mm. Okay. Um. Who's next? Ben. Um. Yeah. Good one, Ollie. You, I like the way you spoke about what to do with the new member and i've written some some notes here and it was exactly that some teams haven't had a new member for a decade or more 
And it sounds odd, but they just don't know how to handle them. Um, and I think it does take tolerance, patience, grace from all those members. So a couple of the examples I've seen, a guy was on a conference call regularly in the evening to America. If you want a working person, that might be something you have to tolerate. You have, you have him with that call or not at all. Um, someone I saw, by the way, I'm not speaking on behalf of Great Western here, just an individual <laughs> disclaimer. Um, uh, I saw a, a young mum uh, join a team, uh, but that team was tight knit and they were all empty nesters. And she was late sometimes or brought her kids. She soon left because of that lack of tolerance from the, the side. Uh, my own daughter asked to join a side at 12. They said no. Um, Trikalita said yes. So they've now got my daughter and my wife. And 12 is young, but it won't be long before she's 16 and you know a young woman. So, um, but there's four years there of possibly moody teenager to, to, to go through. So yeah, it's just that, that thing that when you get them through the door, um, you need that tolerance and maybe uh, sharing lifts or, you know, it does mean a disruption to the, the status quo of uh, an existing team. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's the thing is that um, clubs can be very much set in their ways of, you know, this is how we've always done things or this is how we've always operated. But, you know, you have, you know, yes, you have to keep the core, you know, the you know the the main thing that makes your club what makes you but you have of course got to adapt and to fit with everyone that comes through the door you know i i joined peterborough morris when i was 10 um you know again we then managed to recruit my dad so you know we went the opposite way so my brother joined i joined then dad joined just because he was driving us um but yeah yeah you know, the club fitted around me being there you know that you know, yes, okay, I was a 10 year old, but you know, they, you know, were sensible and they, they adapted to fit. Thank you. Good question. So, uh, Helen? Yeah, I just, I think to follow on from that, um, we've been thinking a lot recently when we've been thinking about recruiting, about making sure that when people come, you don't just start them off doing stepping endlessly or, um, also trying to make sure that they there's somebody that buddies up with them um so they've got somebody um that they can always rely on to kind of be there with them and and chat to them and then they're not too overwhelmed by everybody going over and trying to be friendly at the same time which you know it, it can be a bit daunting if somebody is a bit shy actually so they know that they've got one particular person they can actually turn to if they're a bit struggling yeah and it can be quite daunting if you've only got one new member and everyone else has been there 20 years. Exactly. That's quite hard. That's quite hard to deal with. Um, Martin? Yeah, Ollie, I'm not being critical of you in saying this, but um, you use the term club quite a lot in what you were saying. And I just wonder, because this is something that I, I thought of late, <clears throat> is that... Um, that the whole sort of atmosphere and of, of being part of a team, um, I, I wonder what kind of difference that makes. And if it is more like a sort of club where there's stuff going on, where people perhaps socialise more, um, spend more time together during the day when they're dancing out and this kind of thing, what kind of difference that makes? Yeah, um, I think. For me, you know, yes, I absolutely love the dancing side, but I absolutely, you know, I really enjoy the social aspect as well. Um, you know, last night, um, four of us from Peterborough Morris went to the Insomaniacs Ale. Um, and then this morning we went, um, you know, not in kit or anything, you know, and we went and had breakfast together. Um, and it's just creating that friendship and that bond, which I think make, has made us a tighter knit team um you know we're, we're close you know we we have each other's back you know that there's sometimes that you know um one of us might be going through something you know we we are very much yes okay we're a morris dance side but having the club having the that social aspect i think adds to it and you know makes us all feel more welcomed and just feels more i don't know um we're more together you know and then it makes the dancing feel more together because we are um 
more you know we, we are we are closer together as you know on a social aspect which means we work together when it comes to a performance and you know to make a performance work we have to work as a team um, and having a strong team from doing social things um, from my experience has made that performance such a stronger thing Uh, okay, I think it's probably about to be the last one then, Tom. I think you muted. Or... No, he's not muted, but I don't know why I can't hear him. I think he may have turned his microphone off. No, we can't hear you, Tom. I'm sorry. You can put it in the chat if you like. Can I just say Go on, that Ollie, yes, Mandy. Ollie, I joined because I went to um, a Morris for the Uninitiated workshop at the Discord convention <laughs> in summer and then the lady who was running the workshop told me about the Morris Federation. I'd grown up in Peak District with hankies and things, but down here it's sticks, which I, I actually do prefer. Yes. <laughs> and um, because I did that, I found out about Glastonbury, and that's why I ended up joining. And I went to their Facebook page, and as Tom said earlier, it was so easy to message them and join from that. So, yeah, workshops are good. Okay, okay, Liz, one final. Uh, I can't hear you. <laughs> I don't want to unmute before it's like, you know, um, I just wanted to add about, um, you know, young people, um, not with Beltane, but with a side that I used to run here up in North Devon. We used to go to um, an outdoor, it was a, a you know, a, what do you call it, sort of a, a centre for young people from school to go and do their thing. And one of the options in the evening was for young people to for them to have a go at Morris dancing it was terrific fun good money for us and um nothing like the the boys I mean they were like year five and six boys from Bristol mostly <laughs> but they they just loved having a stick but you know you had to give them a sort of health warning with the stick but you know so many of them didn't want to dance at all. You know, well, you know I'm not going to do this sitting in the, you know, in the little room. And then, um, I don't know, if we managed to get, we, we I always succeeded in getting them up and dancing with the stick. And they absolutely loved it. You know, So it was, as you say, no gain for us directly. But I think that does remain something. They've done it, they've tried it, and they don't think it's sissy and stupid because they enjoyed it, you know, they, they can't deny it um, to themselves. And maybe at some stage, you know, who knows, um, they might think, oh, I could <laughs> give that a go when I'm 25 or 30, I want to get out. So, you know, I think it's um, it's a kind of, a different kind of win-win for, for Morris, you know, and um, something for us indirectly as well. Mm, yeah, taking the long view. Yeah, I agree yeah. with you, Liz. Yeah. OK, well, I'm afraid we're out of time. I'm sorry we've run a few minutes over. Um, I'd just like to call on Nigel Strudwick to make some closing remarks and then I'd like us to have a round of applause for everybody. But over to Nigel first, please. OK, thank you, Pauline. Um, you can all hear me, can't you? Yes, good. OK, well, uh, how do you summarise two hours in a couple of minutes Very with great difficulty? Uh, if I don't mention something somebody said no offence, it's just there's been a lot's gone through my in one ear and hopefully stuck in the middle. Um, the thing that comes over most clearly, and I say this because we've you probably gather for the number of Devil's Dyke people here that we've concentrated very hard on recruitment. You've got to realise that recruitment is, as, to paraphrase the old expression about pets at Christmas, recruitment is for life, not just for Christmas, not for not just for September very very important to work on it and uh, you know i'm certainly hoping that devil's dyke you know please let's give my example under our new leadership team will be kicking off for pretty soon no one size fits everybody we've got all the issues of we've got we've got urban sides like peterborough 
who have a different set of issues to those like my own side who are out very, very rural. Um, but there's a number of interesting things that, that really have come out of it. Now, obviously, there's a lot of stuff about social media, which I, I, I did want to mention that generally, really, because we've had we've dabbled in it, but it's quite clear there's more. And I've learned a lot of things that we can try and do, do today. Other little things that came out. Well, I mean, I didn't know the Duke of Edinburgh of all were, could, might, might work with Morris, but that's certainly something to look at. And some of these other ideas mentioned have, have, have also been, pick, been picked up. Um, I, one, th one cautious note I wanted to mention, there was Michael I mentioned putting stuff out in publicity in libraries. I saw I saw something the other day about libraries saying they might start charging for this sort of thing now. You have to watch with anywhere that you have always thought to be free in the current environment may not necessarily become that way. Um, you know, there's the interesting issues being raised. Do us are, are subs a good idea or not um it's quite interesting to see the perspective that you know you may actually belong and stay with it um devil's dykes always my side's always been um, um you know just just on what whatever we manage to collect basis um but the social role of social media is important and social media managers representatives call them what you will clearly necessary because from what some what we've heard from Ant and Dan was that clearly, you know, you just you don't just firing off one thing and then nothing. You've got to hammer away. And that's a time commitment. Um, but very, 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 very useful. And also looking at working on your local interest groups. So uh, my final comment really is this one, which has also come up. So there's, there's nothing really original that I've come up with. But remember, if it doesn't work, you're ultimately recruiting for the future of the Morris and you might sow that seed in. We all felt this when we've got had students who have come and then been there for a, a while and then gone because they've gone down from university. But to remember that we all hope they may well go back to being to being to do the Morris at some point in the future. So don't give up. Thank you, Nigel. That was magnificent summing up there. Um, so could we all unmute ourselves and give everybody, all our speakers, all our contributors, ourselves, a big round of applause, please.